So in the next slide, talk about bow selection. Did your group have any experience with the bow drill or other forms of primitive fire making that would have helped you out selecting the appropriate bow size? So in the skill video I talked about, and I have extremely long arms, how I use the length of my arm from my wrist to my shoulder to select the length of my bow. Did any of your group members have experience with this skill? That's what I want you to talk about for the bow selection. How did your previous experience connect with selecting the bow? For the next portion of the student edit, talk about the length of the cordage and also the width and how that would impact the bow drill itself and its ability to function and be efficient. Did any of your group members use this skill before? And if so, talk about how that was used to select the appropriate length of cordage. Or did you have to watch the video or the instructor demo to gain the information needed to complete this task? Either way, that's experiential learning. Did you have to learn from somebody or did you already have prior experience where you could help your group out? or have a member that had prior experience. That's what you're gonna talk about in this portion of the video. Now, for the socket selection, did any of your group members have experience with the bow drill? Had they selected a socket? Did they have issues with that socket if they had prior experience? Maybe they didn't know some of the elements that the instructor explained in class, so they can discuss that hey, I learned something either from the videos that the instructor did or from the class demonstration. Did that help out? Or did you even need the video? Maybe you had prior experience and you knew exactly what you needed to select for your group when it came to a socket. Now, this one's a hardwood. I've had this one since seventh grade, and that's made out of bow dark. I've never seen a bow dark tree down here in South Texas, but up in North Texas and Central Texas, you'll see them all over the place. So it's, it's perfect because as it ages, it almost petrifies. And so it gives you a really good handle. If you've ever heard of Osage Orange or a horse apple tree or a hedge apple, that's the tree that this came from. And it's almost turning to stone. The more it ages, the harder it gets. So this is the perfect type of hardwood for a socket because it's gonna polish off and you won't have a lot of friction on the inside against your spindle. So it'll almost function as well as some metals as a socket. Now, spindle selection. All of you have prior experience because of the skills that we did last week. So we're connecting this back to some of the information we've already talked about when it comes to spindle selection. But for a bow drill, we don't need a long spindle. That's an advantage. So it makes it easier to find a fairly straight piece. What we're looking for is something that's about thumb width. And then we would carve the top of it down to about pinky size. Now you can use a hand drill spindle. You'd have to shorten it to use it as a bow drill. But the smaller the diameter, the faster it's gonna burn through your fireboard. So if you apply too much pressure, it can burn through. But for people that don't have a lot of physical endurance, they can use a smaller drill and have an easier time to get it to spin. So they can use a smaller spindle because it won't be as hard to spin, but it's gonna burn through that fireboard really quick. So for this part of the student example, I want you to talk about the prior experience with the hand drill, and how does that vary for selection of a bow drill? So for a bow drill, it has to be shorter than a hand drill. It ideally needs to be a little bit wider, almost no more than thumb width, because then it'd be really hard to rotate. And talk about the ease of finding the materials. Now here's another advantage of a bow drill spindle is it doesn't have to be yucca or solto or a wood that catches on fire really easy. It just needs to be a soft wood. So that's why you'll see a bow drill in a lot of wilderness survival books or videos. A lot of people, this is their go-to. Yes, there are more moving parts, but 
easier to find resources. That's another thing that will differ from the hand drill selection is it's much easier to find a resource to use, mainly because of the length and because you, it's easier to get rotations with the bow than trying to rotate that with your hand. So talk about prior experience in this video, how it helped you and how it may have even caused you to make mistakes when selecting a bow drill spindle. So talk about successes and failures when it comes to spindle selection. Now we get to the fireboard. So the difference between a hand drill, this would be a hand drill fireboard because you see it's about a quarter of an inch thick, has a really small divot in the top and a smaller wedge in the front than what you would see on a bow drill. Now, could I use that? Yes, but what could happen with a thicker spindle is it blows out the front. But I could probably get that to work, but it's gonna burn almost all the way through that fireboard. For a bow drill, you need a little bit thicker of a fireboard. So about an inch to three quarters of an inch thick to get started so that you don't burn through too fast because you're gonna have a lot more downward pressure with a bow drill and a lot more rotations. So it's gonna burn through fairly quick. That's another reason you would want a spindle that is about the thickness of your thumb. You can see this one's almost done here, but that's about as wide as I would want my front notch because if you change the angle of the spindle by accident, it can blow out the front of that notch and then that bow drill won't work. Another thing, and this also applies to a hand drill fireboard, which is just behind here, is you don't want to make your notches too close. Ideally, what I should have done on this one, since we going right down the line, notice how this piece broke off? It's because these were these notches were too close together. Typically what I'll do is if I put a notch here, I would put the notch on the other side for the next one and then on the next. That way I have a wider piece, a wider gap, and that's what I did here. Is this one was almost burned out, so I started a new one. But notice I made that notch on the other side. I actually made it almost too big and it almost burned out the front. It did have a little piece break off and that was mainly because I had another divot and notch on the other side. So there are some differences in fireboard compared to a hand drill fireboard. So a bow drill will be thicker, wider notch, and larger divot on top. And you'll want to start with a deeper divot because a bow drill, if you don't have your technique down, will jump out of that divot real easy until you master the technique, more so than a hand drill. So on fireboard, connect this prior experience. You already have experience with the fireboard making all of these elements. You just have to size it up. A thicker fireboard, a wider notch, a deeper divot to get started. Talk about how prior experience could help you and how it could also cause you to make mistakes if you just try to replicate exactly what you did on a hand drill fireboard. And the last thing I want you to talk about in your conclusion is summarize everything. And as you summarize, you could start putting your kit together. So you could still use the clove hitch, but if you don't have enough cordage, another advantage of a bow drill, instead of having to use a clove hitch, is you can create like a little notch with a saw blade and then wedge your cordage in there with a knot at the end and it'll stay. So I'm gonna do that, I'm not gonna make you watch that, but in your summary video, you could film elements of you putting the bow drill kit together and talk about how prior experience helped, how it hurt certain elements, and then if you want to, at the very end, go down and attempt to make an ember. You don't have to be successful, because again, this is more about the theory than it is about the skill. So I'm gonna tie this together and show you a couple of um, key things you could show in your summary video. Okay, on this end, I just slid the knot in because I had that notch, but I've had this bow for a while and it started to split. To protect against that, I did a clove hitch first with a half hitch, and then I wedged that knot down in there. So the clove hitch, if this continues to try to split, will actually tighten down and prevent that split from getting worse. And this knot 
sliding into to this really wide wedge that started to split will prevent, even though I only have one half hitch, will prevent that clove hitch from shaking loose. Now with your spindle, you want it about the width of your thumb at the end, but you want to shave this down so that it's about pinky size or smaller. And then you would wrap this up, try to get at least four or five wraps, probably no more than six. Now how this is gonna differ from a traditional tensioned bow drill that you'll see in most books is we kind of have to keep this at an angle. We're not keeping it perfect, perfectly parallel to the ground. We keep the bow at an angle as we turn it. Because if we get too far up here, those will catch because this is an Egyptian bow drill with several wraps rather than just one. And that'll actually prevent you from rotating the spindle and can cause the spindle to jump out of the fireboard, out of the notch. So once you have it all together, it should look something like this. Several wraps around your spindle with the cordage. That'll keep it from slipping. It'll give you more rotations and give you more power and torque down here at the end without it's the spindle slipping within the cordage. Um, you notice I shaved a thin piece off the fireboard to slide under to tape my ember so I could drop it into my tinder bundle. It also protect it from moist ground so it doesn't wick moisture up from the ground. Got my socket up here to protect my hand. And if you need to see how the actual skill is done, go back to the skill video that I have on the handout or just have me demonstrate it for you in class.